WSFA Channel 12, Montgomery. Live from Alabama's news source, this is WSFA News 12, The Late Report. Good evening and welcome. I'm Kim Hendricks. And I'm Barry Davis. Thanks for staying with us for the late report. 800 people who work for Russell Corporation will soon lose their jobs. Russell announced today it will close its sewing plants in Lafayette and Alexander City and its textile plant in Sylacauga. The company also plans to consolidate its original Coosa yarn facility near Alex City. Russell sells uniforms and athletic and casual wear under the brand names Russell Athletic, Jerseys, and Cross Creek. It's the largest supplier of athletic apparel for high school and college programs in the country. Russell is reporting second quarter earnings well below forecast, they say because of slower demand. Russell's decision to close its plants will no doubt put a big economic hurt on those towns, too. The town of Lafayette is bracing for the pain, but it's something they've gone through before, so they have an idea of what to expect. Brian Henry spent the day in Lafayette. Brian, how many people will lose their jobs there? Well, Kim and Barry, 220, but believe it or not, some of the people affected by the impending layoffs later this month are looking on the bright side. This small town of 3,500 is feeling even smaller. Desiree Green was on the job Wednesday morning when she and her co-workers got the bad news. Some were happy and some were sad. Some cheered, some cried. Green is among the happy ones. She sees it as an opportunity to find something better. Like they have worked us hard for on the pain. That's how I feel. And it's a lot of While Green looks forward to finding a new job, there is concern about the short term. One official estimates the plant closing will have about a $7 million impact on the local economy. One man who will most certainly feel the pain is Terry Mangrum. He's a grocery store manager. The majority of Russell's employees bought food here. Mangrum thinks a store could lose $500,000 a year in revenues. And I don't think we'll have to lay anyone off. At least not yet. Not yet anyway. We look at this as an opportunity to... Two years ago, Valerie Gray took over as director of the Chambers County Industrial Development Authority. The authority helps bring in new businesses. This latest development with Russell is Valerie's first major crisis. But there's no time to sit and worry. 220 people need her help. We started at 8 o'clock this morning working with uh, state agencies, local agencies, with job training. We've already been in contact with ADECA. No one here has lost hope. They've been through much worse. About 10 years ago, West Point Stevens, another company, laid off about 1,000 people. The city and county bounced back with new jobs and new businesses. They believe they can do it again. Valerie Grace says that she knows of at least two companies that are expanding and she's already talking to a potential renter for the Russell building. So there are some possibilities out there, but nothing definite. Kim? Okay, Brian. Russell was Lafayette's largest employer and the city can probably expect a drop in its revenues because Russell was the town's biggest utility user. Folks in Otago County got some bad news today as well. Wright Plastics is shutting down its plant in Prattville and laying off its employees. Now, last month, the company laid off between 50 to 150 workers. Those employees received letters Monday explaining the company was in debt and could not afford to continue operations. Winton Blunt III owns Wright Plastics. He confirmed the layoffs today and said the company is now up for sale. Governor Sigelman is making sure any company hired for state business makes it known if they have any family or political ties to the governor or his administration. The governor signed an executive order today requiring that disclosure. He promised the executive order last month when he fired construction managers on a $16 million state warehouse project. And questions were raised about double billing and political connections to the governor's staff. Governor Sigelman says every governor's administration has had questions about friends getting state business and the time has come to do something about it. Well, meanwhile, Sigelman says he will be making some changes in his administration soon, but says it's nothing out of the ordinary. Right now, the governor is only talking about one of the changes. He says the director of the Alabama Department of Economic and Community Development, Nick Bailey, will move to a job in the governor's executive office. Sigelman says Bailey never wanted the director's position at ADECA, but took it at the governor's request when the previous director resigned. No word yet on who will replace Bailey as director. Alabama's college presidents say they're not racist just because they're fighting for equal cuts in the state's education budget. 
The universities have been criticized for using Amendment 111 to the Alabama Constitution as a basis for their court fight over education dollars. 111 was passed in the 50s in an effort to fight segregation. It said the state did not have a constitutional duty to provide every child a public education. Higher ed wants equal cuts among K through 12 and higher ed. Outgoing Council Chairman Jack Hawkins says he, along with all higher ed presidents, resent being called racist. The universities, I think, are the, are the bastions of fairness. I think they uh, demonstrate well the best of this state. Uh, all you need to do is to look at the diversity on our campuses and you see that we are, in this state, probably the very best example of, of people living together in a harmonious fashion, working productively and, and making the state better. The Alabama Supreme Court is scheduled to hear arguments June 20th over whether the governor can cut a greater chunk from higher ed than grades K through 12. Now, if you have kids at Troy State University, you'll soon be paying more for tuition. The university hiked its rate by 6%. The move increases undergraduate tuition for a full-time student from $1,425 to $1,510 per semester. Trustees say the increase is to partially offset proration. Troy State's increase comes just one day after Auburn University and AUM raised their tuition. Montgomery police are investigating a shooting tonight. It happened just before 9.30 this evening on Hopper Street. Police tell us one victim was taken to Jackson Hospital, but they're not talking about the seriousness of the injury or what led to the shooting. We will have more information for you on the incident tomorrow morning on Today in Alabama. For the second time in nearly two months, a body has been found on railroad tracks in Opelika. Central Georgia Railroad authorities called the Opelika police just before 9 o'clock this morning. They say the body was found by someone driving a jack temper machine down the tracks. Railroad authorities say the last train to come through Opelika before the body was found was at 11.30 last night. 50-year-old Larry Baker was run over by a train in Opelika back in April. Police have not determined yet whether he was dead or alive when the train hit him. Each week on Crime Stoppers, we ask you to call police if you know anything about the crime we show you. And it's paying off. One suspected criminal is captured, but another is still at large. Beth Jett reports. Crime Stoppers found out this week a tipster who saw Laura Jane Brown profiled on WSFA called in just the information Millbrook police needed to capture her. Concerned citizens have helped authorities locate more than 90 people wanted for criminal activity since 1997. But more are on the run, including Chad Wayne Cowart. He's wanted for charges of theft of property and criminal possession of a forged instrument. If you know anything about Chad Cowart or where to find him, call Crime Stoppers at 21 five stop or the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office directly and to see who else is wanted check out the Crime Stoppers website you can get to it from our homepage WSFA.com Beth Jett WSFA News 12 for Crime Stoppers just last week the Board of Directors of Crime Stoppers voted to award one tipster $250 for information leading to the arrest of a man who had escaped well, our weather is calm, but it's a totally different story down on the coast. It sure is. Four people drowned today in the Pensacola Destin areas due to dangerous surf conditions, the remnants of Tropical Storm Allison. At least two dozen other people had to be rescued from the rough waters in the Gulf. Rich is in the Storm Center now. Rich, are we still expecting rain from what's left of Allison? We are, but not tonight. Uh, that is going to be in our future, especially tomorrow night and into Friday. And, uh, take a look at Neighborhood Weather Net. Very warm out there tonight, 79 degrees. It is murky. The dew point is 70, so it feels very humid. And on the map, you can see most of the rain now is from the Alabama-Mississippi line on westward. And you can also see this circulation turning around here. That is the remnants of uh, Allison. And it's all that moisture which will be moving eastward in the next 24 hours in a big way. So we have a lot more rain to look forward to, but not tonight. All the rain is um, threatening West Alabama right now. And it uh, looks like the Channel 12 viewing area will stay dry overnight. Mostly cloudy skies, light wind, low temperature right around 70. But changes on the way as that moisture begins to get, uh, get a little closer and another frontal system heads this way. We'll have the forecast that will take you through the weekend. That's coming up in a few minutes here on the late report. <laughs> late, late. Late, late yeah. report. Yeah. Thank you, Rich. Well, time is running out for convicted Oklahoma City bomber Timothy McVeigh. A federal judge ruled today on whether the information the FBI originally withheld would make a difference in McVeigh's case. The full story when we come back. Mr. King.
You are watching WSFA News 12, The Late Report, with Kim Hendricks and Barry Davis. The execution of convicted bomber Timothy McVeigh is still on for Monday morning. A federal judge ruled today the information withheld by the FBI did not change the fact of McVeigh's conviction. Now McVeigh's attorneys plan to appeal tomorrow. Here's Leanne Gregg from Denver. Saying it's clear Timothy McVeigh committed murder and mayhem, Judge Richard Mage refused to grant a stay of execution. Mage said he was shocked to learn the FBI failed to turn over their documents before the trial, but there was no government conspiracy. We are extremely disappointed in the court's ruling today. We will file on Mr. McVeigh's behalf an appeal to the United States Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit. Judge Major's ruling was a powerful and eloquent statement, not only about the law associated with this case, but about the tremendous harm and devastation caused by Timothy McVeigh. Attorney General John Ashcroft, who issued a stay last month, had this reaction. The ruling of the court in Denver today is a ruling for justice. It's a justice which cannot be denied. One of the victims, Paul Heath, says it was the right decision. Timothy McVeigh, the condemned, delusional, suicidal bomber of the federal building who showed his real self as a hypocrite by even bringing this charge, will die by lethal injection. McVeigh awaits execution five days from now at a federal prison in Terre Haute, Indiana. Unless a higher court rules, his sentence should be delayed. Leanne Gregg, NBC News, Denver. The case may end up before the U.S. Supreme Court. If the execution is carried out, it would be the first federal inmate execution in 38 years. Timothy McVeigh's father says he's disappointed but not surprised at the judge's refusal to delay the execution. Bill McVeigh watched news reports today from his home in Pendleton, New York. He says he will not be in Terre Haute, Indiana for Monday's scheduled execution, but will not be at home either. He says the flag that flies outside his home will come down tomorrow. He doesn't want the flag flying during the execution. Well, Rich, down on the coast, people are... Uh getting a lot of rain, a lot of rough seas, yeah. a lot of bad weather from what's left. Riptide you were talking Allison. about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Allison just helped the flow. Allison wasn't directly a result, oh, really? result of that riptide. However, the rain associated with Allison is now starting to move our way. It's a complicated forecast, but all you have to know are the rain chances are going up. And we'll show you the numbers on that and your weekend forecast coming up next. Now, the WSFA Storm Team's Rich Thomas. We had a day today which was generally dry around the Channel 12 viewing area, and that's pretty interesting because the state west of us got a lot of rain. The state east of us got a lot of rain. We were kind of in a rainless zone, so to speak. That will change tomorrow, though. Take a look at what's happening right now out at the airport. 77 degrees. Whenever the dew point is 70 or higher, that's tropical air. That's like being in the jungle. Humidity 79%, winds out of the south, southeast at 5. Humidity, uh, the uh, high temperature today, rather, 88. Our low this morning was 67, and very close to our normals. Look at our normals, 88 and 66. And by the way, look at that record high, 103 on this date in 1985. Wow. Take a look at the extensive cloud shield around the remnants of Allison. It's just the remnants now. It's not a tropical depression. It's just a regular old tropical low-pressure system with no other designation. But look at the... Uh, circulation around very heavy rain in northeastern texas there's also been rain bands coming into parts of louisiana and mississippi as well and the western edge of that i should say the eastern edge of that is now on alabama's western border and you can also see some showers and thunderstorms to the north along a frontal system and all of these will interact the, all the rain from uh, allison will interact with the front from the north so a very complicated forecast but what it spells is much better rain chances as we go into tomorrow afternoon and especially tomorrow night into friday uh, through much of the area a lot of clouds today uh, but some sunshine filtering through those clouds but very few showers as we've been talking about and as we look at what's going on at this hour you can see most of the activity is coming into northwest alabama and extreme west alabama and these rain bands which are the outer edge of the circulation around Allison, or what's left of Allison, will continue to affect the western areas. I think the Channel 12 viewing area will stay dry tonight. 
but get ready for some rain as we go later into tomorrow and tomorrow night and into Friday as well. And you can see the front up to the north, and this is tomorrow morning. You can also watch the moisture from Allison starting to see how it spreads to the east and see how this frontal system then begins to interact with it. And as it does, a wet Thursday night into Friday across much of the area. And then as we look ahead, we think now that the front will be going into South Alabama Saturday and Sunday. Still a chance of some lingering showers near the front Saturday. So we're going to have to mention the chance of showers Saturday, but smaller chances Sunday and primarily down near the coast. I think because the front will be down here, your beach forecast will include showers right on through the weekend. Here's a, your forecast for tonight now. It's a dry one out there tonight, mostly cloudy, 70 degrees for the overnight low and light wind. And then for tomorrow, partly sunny, but that's primarily in the morning. Then a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms high around 86. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then for tomorrow night, look for thunderstorms likely. 70 is the overnight low. And the outlook for Friday, 80% chance of thunderstorms. Locally heavy rain, I wouldn't be surprised. 85 the high on Friday. Looking ahead, we're going to include at least a few scattered showers in the Saturday forecast, but chances are down to 30%, then 20% Sunday, and then warming up Monday with more sunshine and fewer showers in the area. So if your uh, lawn hasn't had enough rain yet, I can't imagine that, but actually some parts of the viewing area, that is true. Uh, that will change over the next day or two. It's amazing how these storms may not be particularly strong mm -hmm. in terms of tropical storm, but boy, their lasting effects go on and on and on. Just Sometimes that's long. good. They can uh, end the drought, you know? You're right. Exactly. Yeah, but by, by Monday or Tuesday, we'll need some sun yeah. <laughs> to or dry things out a little bit. Sure. Okay. Sexual harassment is something you've probably only heard about in the workplace among adults, so you may be surprised to hear that your children are probably dealing with this at school. And some students say it even happens when a teacher is nearby, but they do have some ideas on how to stop it. America's schools are overflowing with bullies, and surprisingly, that study was actually on sexual harassment. The report also found that despite anti-harassment policies in place, touching or taunting often takes place right under teachers' noses. Jane Wattrell has our story. From unwanted touching to homophobia, the nation's hallways have turned nasty. Millions of school kids are being sexually harassed. A new study says three out of four students complain that teasing and taunting by peers happens almost every day. The students ranked as the top three things that impacted them the most. One, having sexual rumors being spread about them. Secondly, having their clothes pulled at or tugged at in sexual ways. And also being called either gay or lesbian. The new report from a national educators group surveyed over 2,000 public school students ages 14 through 17. It found most of the ridicule and harassment went on out in the open, often with teachers nearby. But the head of a teacher's union says don't hang this on schools alone. All of us, no matter what our situation in life may be, have a responsibility to do what we can do to correct this kind of behavior and to protect our young people. But that isn't happening. The study found continued harassment leads to a slip in grades and self-esteem, and in extreme cases, violence. 15-year-old Andy Williams is accused of killing two students and wounding 13 others in a California school shooting. Friends say he was constantly picked on by bullies. A U.S. Secret Service investigation found that in over two-thirds of school shooting cases, the attackers were harassed before the incident. Students say it's a way of life. One person in particular I can think about was a boy. He was like smaller, not really athletic, and he was picked on more than, more so. Surprisingly, the report found harassment is equal opportunity. Girls are just as likely to bully as boys. In Washington, Jane Wattrell, NBC News. As for solutions, students surveyed say don't show them videos or hold school assemblies. They want adults to help them confront their tormentors and end the abuse. Well, we're now, what, 18 and a half hours or so away yeah. from the first pitch. I think this we're is exciting. We're getting closer and closer tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would say this morning, a little later today, but at 11 it's, minutes uh, from that. It's getting exciting. The field really is big deal. pretty much ready. Yeah, and uh, what a great night we should have tomorrow night for the Montgomery Wings home opener. We'll talk more about that coming up next in sports. Now, the WSFA sports team's Derek Steyer. 
Welcome back. Tomorrow night, the Montgomery Wings will take the field in front of the home crowd. It's the home opener for the Capital City's professional baseball team. Festivities kick off at 6.30 at Patterson Field. Their opponent, the Albany Alligators. The Wings coming home tonight after losing to the Tennessee Tees. 5-3 was the final score. Still, the Wings took 2 out of 3. Their record is an even 3-3. Three and three. The Atlanta Braves looking for their fifth straight win. Not a lot of runs scored tonight, but it was enough. Rico Bronia smashes a solo job over the center field wall. John Burkett struck out seven, allowing just two hits in seven innings of work. Braves shut out the Expos 2-0. They now own a season-high five-game winning streak and have won seven out of their past eight. Opelika's Matt Davis has a pretty good summer itinerary. Play a little baseball in Cuba and the Dominican Republic. Team USA formed a 13-year-old's team this year, and Davis was one of two Alabamians selected to play. Davis, along with A.J. Wernsberger of Tuscaloosa, are just two of 30 13-year-olds in the country playing on the team. Davis is considered by many the best 13-year-old left-handed pitcher in the country. He's 5-0 this year and hasn't allowed an earned run on his Dixie Youth Baseball team. Team USA manager Mike Adams considered Davis a no-brainer for the team. He says... When he graduates high school, he'll be one of the top five kids picked. And in case you're interested, Davis has a mean fastball. He's been clocked in the mid-80s. The 2001 Major League Draft continued today. A couple of Tide and Tigers being plucked. Todd Faulkner was taken by the New York Yankees for the second straight year. He goes in the 22nd round. Trent Pratt was a 34th round pick of Arizona. And Alabama's Casey Lambert going to the Colorado Rockies in the 24th round. NFL minicamps are going on all across the country, and a couple of former Auburn Tigers are trying to work their way into the rotation. Ben Leard and Ronnie Daniels are together again at the New England Patriots minicamp this week. For both players, it'll be a tough fight to climb the depth chart. Drew Bledsoe is a lock at QB with Michael Bishop behind him, and the Patriots recently signed free agent wideouts Charles Johnson and Torrance Small, so Daniels will have his work cut out for him. At rookie camp, Ben said his head was spinning, trying to take everything in, but it's getting better. Once I sit down and at night and go through everything and, and slow myself down and, and really go through the P's and Q's of everything, what I have to learn, uh, it, it helps me a lot. And at the same time, the guys are very helpful uh, as far as explaining what's going on. And if I have any questions, they're more than willing to help me out. The Patriots minicamp wraps up tomorrow. We'll hear more from Ben in the 6 o'clock report. Andre Agassi is going home from the French Open. Agassi was upset by Sebastian Grosjean. Four sets. Grosjean will face Alex Carecia in the semifinals. The women's semifinals are tomorrow. Jennifer Capriati takes on Martina Hengis. Kim Clisters meets Justine Aining in the other semifinal. Lakers and Sixers tipping off the NBA Finals tonight. Lakers a little rusty in the early going, but... An exciting finish. Fourth quarter, Kobe Bryant driving, dishes off to Shaq O'Neal, who stuffs at home. 41 points for O'Neal to that point. Jack loves it. Lakers up by two. The Sixers answer, Eric Snow ties it at 94, and we're going to overtime where we let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. The running one-hander. The Sixers win it. Iverson had seven straight at one point in OT. Philadelphia beats L.A. for the first time in the playoffs, 107 to 101 and it was as exciting I think as we anticipated so yeah you gotta love those overtimes mm -hmm. well <laughs> four minutes to midnight I'm supposed to be in bed. yeah here we sit yeah, thanks Ed. <laughs> we love babies here at WSFA if you mm -hmm. or people upstairs aren't having them we want to talk about them anyway okay <laughs> we'll tell you about the newest baby at the Montgomery Zoo when we come back Before we go, the Montgomery Zoo has another new baby to show off. It may look like a cow, but it's actually a bantig, an endangered species that comes from the jungles of Indochina and Borneo. There are only about 8,000 of these left in the world because of poachers and habitat. Both males and females grow horns. They eat only grass and leaves, and this little guy will grow up to weigh about 1,700 pounds. He was born on the 28th of May and should live for about, oh, 20 years. I love its coloring, the little looks white so, inside legs. Looks like a cow. Yeah, sure Boy, does. you know it's late when the Today in Alabama producer's up there producing the show already. <laughs> is he really? Asking us to get off the set. Say, hey, what are you doing here? Here's your wake-up forecast, partly sunny. When their show is done tomorrow morning, it'll be 71 degrees at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Rich, and thanks to all of you for staying up we late. we turn it over to you, Desmond. Mm -hmm.